In this tutorial, for beginning and intermediate Blender users, I'll show you how to combine uh, soft body physics with cloth effects, and the soft body physics will look more like a rigid body within here. And I'm using version 2.63a. Uh, Alright, so let's get started. So I'll just run the animation real quick because it's baked into the cache for the moment, and I'll show you what it does. So I have a wind physics force over here blowing the cloth initially. You can see it's kind of blowing on its own at the outset. And then the icosphere collides with the cloth and then runs up the hill. All right, so this is the scene we'll set up. And so I'll stop it and delete the objects and start from scratch so you can see it from the beginning. All right, so I'll get rid of this guy. Get rid of this object. I'll get rid of the wind. There's the wind over there. All right. And these are just, this is just my regular plane, and this is a copy of the plane, just at a 45 degree angle that you normally see in the scene. And the one thing that I had to have said is for these planes, uh, over here, you can see I have collision set, just the standard default values for each one, all right? All right, so let's, let's move over here and add a, sh we'll shift A, add a mesh, we'll add an icosphere to the scene and we'll put it right about there and better give them a color. All right, we'll make them that turquoise kind of color. And then over here, I'll shift A and I'll add a plane to the scene. I'll rotate it on X like this and I'll give that a color as well. Okay, so there's our objects back in the scene like this. Now, um, for the icosphere, what we want is this wants to be a soft body. We we're going to simulate the effects of a rigid body, but using soft body physics. All right. And typically, when you add a, go into the physics tab and we'll add a soft body to it. And let's just press Alt A and see what happens. And let's see. There it is. It just bounces. Now that's pretty much what happens when you add it. And it's like, well, what is that doing? All right. So we'll add our wind to the scene and see if that helps. Shift A, well, I'll add an empty. And to the empty, I'll add a I mean, physics tab again, I'll add the wind. And there's some wind, I'll give it a little bit of strength like that. Let's see which way is it pointing. It's pointing up like that. So I'll rotate it on X. So it points about like that. And then let me go over here and make sure, well, I'll look from above and make sure they're all Where's that other one? Oh, they're not all really lined up with each other, but I want them lined up with each other like that. So the wind blows into the cloth and blows the ball towards the cloth as well. Okay. So now that they're in there, now let's see what happens when I run the animation. It has to, it has to recycle through. So now you can see it's still bouncing, but it has a little bit of a bounce at this angle as well because of the wind. All right. So that's that's okay, but that's not quite what I want. And one other thing I don't want, I'm going to move this back over here. I'm going to move these back over just a little bit. Could move the light, but all right. So they're more in the light. So what we need to do is we need to add vertex groups. And if you're not familiar with vertex groups, I recommend you see in a tutorial that I did that just specifically deals with vertex groups. But you, you can learn it in here as well. So what we need to do is we need to tab into edit mode for this object and then we need to go up to the object data button here and we need to create a vertex group and this allows us to set the weight of the vertices with the object and all that really means is if you have a weight of one it means the the vertice is basically is not going anywhere and if you have a weight of zero it can move freely so for all of these I'm going to set those to have a weight of 0 0.1 and I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call it ICO, and I'm going to assign that value of 0 0.1 to all of those vertices like that. And then I'll tab out of it. If I run Alt-A again, let's see if it does it when it comes back around. It still doesn't do anything. And that's because you have to go back to the Physics tab where your soft body is set. These are usually closed down like this, but I want the soft body edges selected, and I want the soft body goals selected, and I need to click in here and select the vertex group. So now it knows about it. And typically I take the goal strength and I want it to be 100% of the goal strength that I set 
for the vertex groups. Now let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so now the wind is affecting the object. And well, it looks like a soft body, right? It's kind of deforming, and that's pretty much what you get with soft body effects, soft body physics. But I would really want to use it to act like um, a rigid body, like you would maybe use in the game engine. Because with the, if you use it in here, then objects can collide with each other and affect each other, and I want to be able to use cloth effects, which you can't use within the game engine. So I need to try and turn this into a rigid body. So typically, I'll set the stiff quads. You would think, okay, maybe that makes all the edges stiff. Let's see if that happens. It has to come through. Nope, that doesn't do it. And I crank up the springs on these. Let's see, stiffness, right? Let's try that. <laughs> nope, that doesn't do it. But what you need to do is right down here under bending, you just need to give it a little bit of bending. I don't know why, but you do. All right, now let's try and see what happens. It has to run through first because it resets the cache. Oh, there we go. So now it's a now it resembles more of a you know rigid body as it's moving and rolling up the hill. <coughs> All right, that's a really important setting not to forget. There. Okay, so we're not quite done. So let's take the cloth. I'm going to scale them up a little bit like this and for the cloth to work you have to use the same type of effects as oh yeah you know what I'm gonna do with this object I'm gonna spin him around 180 degrees RZ180 because he was in the scene like that so if, and then I can select him from this side he can't always select from the same side like if I select that but I can't select it from this side alright so I have this and um, in order for the cloth to work, we'll have to, in the physics tab, we'll make it a cloth object. But you notice down in here, it's got this thing, vertex group. It says vertex group for pinning of vertices. So it implies that it needs a vertex group. And sure enough, it does. So we go back to the object data, tab into edit mode for this. And what you'll need to make this look nice is you're going to need more than four vertices at the edges. So the uh, first thing I'll do is I'll subdivide it once, twice, three times like that. Then I'll deselect everything with the A key. I'll press the C key for selection. And then I'll just, with the left mouse hold held down, I'm going to select all those vertices along the top row like that. Because I want to pin those down. I'll escape out of that. And then I'm going to assign these. Like I said, for I'll create the vertex group. I'll call it cloth. And to pin them down so they don't go anywhere, like you saw in the animation, they have to be set to a value of 1. And just because I said it doesn't do anything, I have to assign them. And then I'm going to select the inverse. So over here, you can go to Select, Inverse, Control-I. And then I'll change the weight of these as well. And I'll make these 0.1. And I'll assign those as well. OK, now let's, let's see. I'll tab out of here. Let's run the animation, see what happens. Oh, and it goes right through it. Let's see. Uh oh, so oh the cloth seems to work right, but back to the physics tab. Certainly, we need to select the vertex group and pin it down. All right, and there's going to be one more thing. Now you'll see the wind now affects the cloth. You can see it's blowing the cloth in the wind just slightly, but the ball goes right through it. So this has to have a collision effect. And this has to have a collision effect as well. And now when we run the animation, it should, after it cycles through it one time. Let's see. Now it should. Of course, there's um, a lot of data being crunched in here. But it's fine when you're doing a rendering at the end. And let's see, this should interact with the cloth. Well, there you go. And we'll let it run through because after it finishes it the first time through, it stores the data in cache memory and then it'll just run the animation smoothly. And this is looking at 2.6 frames per second. That's on a GTX 470 card too.
Okay, well there you go. Soft body physics that kind of resemble a rigid body uh, along with cloth effects. All right, I hope it helps you with your animations, and I'll see you in the next lesson.